we've got a message coming your way on Family Secrets from the book of Ruth. And uh, let's check it out. We've been studying this little book over the last few weeks, but focusing on family. And what can we find on family inside the book of Ruth, even though it's, it's sort of an odd, an odd story. Okay, so today's message is a lasting love. Would you say that with me? A Isn't that what you won't say? I want a lasting love. I want one that lasts. Okay? Well, maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you're struggling right now. Well, maybe we can get some help today. I'm not saying we're going to get it all fixed today, but maybe we can get some help today from the Word of God. Amen? So let's look at the story today and, and have an open mind to what we're going to see today. Here we go. Can't we preach everything about Naomi? She lost her husband, her two sons. They were married, so now there's three uh, widows. You know, and so one decides, I want to go with you for sure. Ruth goes with Naomi back to her hometown of Bethlehem. They leave Moab, and uh, Moab is a cursed place. It's the most horrible place to come from on the planet, especially if you cross over the border into Israel. They hate your guts. They will never speak to you. They will kill you, okay? So, but she comes back. So Ruth is really in a foreign land in a bad way, okay, in a bad situation. Here's a widow woman with a daughter-in-law, Former daughter-in-law, still daughter-in-law, her husband's dead. And uh, they're just having a hard time even eating. Okay? So they're back home. Now the story keeps going. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, says unto Ruth, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for you, that it might be well with you? She knows this ain't a good situation forever. You living right here at the house. And I know you love me, but there's a life out there for you. Okay? And perhaps somebody. So, let's move the message. So, greater vision. She's trying to help her see there's a future. You have a future out there, Ruth. Okay? Keep looking. Regardless of your past or your past experiences, the grace of God can make a difference in your life. Regardless of your past or past experiences, the grace of God. You've got to see that, though. And you've got to believe that. Okay? We're talking about a lasting love. And with that grace... You can have a great marriage. You can have a great... doesn't mean you haven't been hurt. doesn't mean people haven't hurt you in the past. Okay? So what does that mean? I get hurt? I get screwed up and jaded for the rest of my life and I never try again? Is that the end of the story here? It doesn't have to be the end of the story. Y'all listening? Yes or no? God's grace is still available. And we can still have a great marriage and a lasting love. So Naomi cast a vision for Ruth. And I'm going back and forth here in this story because it's not really clearly saying this, but, but I, I feel it's there. And she's casting a vision for Ruth that, listen, shall I seek rest for you that it might be well with thee? The word rest can be translated as what? Can we try to see you having your own home? We ain't talking about a house. Because to a, to a woman, the house, it matters, security, but what really matters is, is love and children and a family and a future. And she's trying to cast that vision for her. Home can easily be translated as rest. So we just said that. The two words go hand in hand. Okay? So that's what she's doing here. This is a, there's a great security that comes from what? I wish more people knew that. And I don't want to be ugly today, but people get hooked up and they get tied up and and uh, they're living together, and I understand that. I know how it happens. It's not God's plan. It's not God's way. God wants every woman to have security. And I believe you're worth it, ma'am, to have some fellow say to you, I will commit my life to you. And I ain't ashamed to do it publicly. I will give my life before God and folks to you because you matter that much to me. Amen. Yes or no? Amen. Praise. Thank the Lord for marriage, man. Okay? We forget that. You know, we forget that sometimes. That boy, God, when he put marriage together, and there's something about it, about the, the feeling of value and the feeling of worth to know that I, I matter that much to somebody. They're willing to commit their life to me and to take that vow that I, I'm not going to be unfaithful, but rather I'm going to, for better or for worse, I did a marriage yesterday at the church property on the campus. Somebody wanted to get married at our church campus yesterday, couldn't do it inside, we did it on the courtyard. It was beautiful. And to hear them pledging to each other their love, marriage, so, we're talking about secret to a lasting love. So, she sort of started talking to Ruth a little bit, and she didn't have nobody in mind per se. I mean, Ruth didn't, you know, she just like helping, you know, mother-in-law right there. And, uh, but, but mama sees, this mother-in-law sees something. 
Okay? And she sees there's a future for you, lady. Okay? So she starts to cast that vision. So what's the first secret this morning? Number one, you got to believe you can have it. Say that with me. you got to what? Believe you can what? Have it. Or you can stay stuck with the hurt of the past. I can't have it. Them, you know, whatever. Or you can make the other choice. I believe I can have it. Say that with me. I believe I can what? I believe I can have it. You've also got to believe that you're worth it too. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. That's not being arrogant. You're made in the image of God. Jesus gave his life for you. You're worth a whole lot. Amen. Say. Any ability, any talents that you have, God gave you those. You are worth it. You are worth somebody spending and committing their life to you. You are worth it. Are you hearing me today? Say. Sure. Okay, but you got to believe that. you got to believe you can have it. Now let's keep going with the story. We need out of verse 1. Now we go to verse 2. Here we go. You might say, Clark, you sure found a lot in verses. Well, I think I did. Okay, here we go. Now is not Boaz, this is Naomi talking, is not Boaz one of our kin folk? And if you knew last week's message, she had had a run in, a good run in with Boaz and, and getting stuff from the field and eating and bringing some vittles home for, for mama. Remember last week? Now is Boaz not one of our kin folk whose maidens you were? You were with him last week, remember? Behold, unusual word, he winnoweth, winnoweth barley tonight. Women are just something, ain't they? Look at Naomi. Naomi knows what's going on, don't she? She knows where Boaz is going to be. You see that? He is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. But now she had to first get her to think she could have it, <laughs> okay? That she's good enough. You, you deserve somebody. And now she goes on saying, now, what's the threshing floor? It's a place for refining. We're going to go through this real fast. Boaz would be winnowing barley on the threshing floor in the evening. There's a threshing floor, a traditional-looking threshing floor. It was usually located on an elevated, exposed site so the breeze could help the winnowing process. As you're doing the grain and the wind's blowing, you know, the, the real good stuff is falling. The westerly winds in Israel are a lot like the winds in southwest Florida that we get here as well. They begin to blow in the afternoon like it does here sometimes, and they continue through sunset, and then it calms right down, just like it does right here. The grain was separated from the husk by animal-drawn sledges being pulled across the grain, which was then thrown into the air with a wooden pitchfork. How many have ever used those kind of things before? Some of you farm folks, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, in the air. I'm glad I get to go to Publix, ain't you? Yeah. What I'm talking about. The breeze helped blow away the chaff, allowing the kernels of grain to drop to the threshing floor. Just a little bit of history. The men would usually remain through the night. Why? To guard the what? Absolutely, they've worked all day and they sleep right there at the threshing floor. Been working, we're sleeping, ain't leaving. Somebody gonna come steal this mess? It ain't happening. I'm right here. Amen. That's the plan. So she said, Boaz is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. So here's some instructions she tells us. Are you all right so far? You're like your head's like, oh, he's crazy. Here, keep coming. Here we go. Come on. She says this to Ruth, wash yourself. <laughs> Therefore, and anoint yourself. Put your raiment on you. Get down to the floor. This sounds like Rockingham talk. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. Listen, when you go down there, he's been working all day. He's wow. out. He's hungry. Don't be presenting yourself, look at me. Because he's going to choose the food, I'm just telling you. <laughs> he's wore out and he's a bath, come on. You listening to me, Ruth? And it shall be when he lies down, you shall mark the place where he shall lie. Now watch this now. And, you're gonna, and you shall go in and uncover his what? Now, I don't recommend this to you right away, ladies out here, but. And lay thee down, and he will tell you what you shall do. Now, hang in here with me. Hang in here with me. A lot of fellows are going, wow, this is exciting. I like the Bible. 
I like the Bible. Hey, God's always been for marriage. God's always been for marriage. God's always been for a man to have a woman and a woman to have a man and them to have love and intimate love. That's always God's plan. You hear me say? Can we thank the Lord for that? Come on. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet loving. Here we go. Keep with me, though. Keep with me. So here's some instructions. I'll, I'll give them to you today. Here we go. Here we go. You got to believe you can have it. But wait a minute. Wash yourself. Anoint yourself. A little perfume. Don't overload it, though. From a fellow, I'm just telling you. Number three, clothe yourself. That's okay. Best you have. Don't have to be what other people have. Do the best you can do, right? Say. When I was seeing Kim, I remember the thing that really drew me to her. She didn't have hardly anything. But she did the best with what she had. And I'll tell you what, as a fella, that drew me to her. That humility and that, that's just a beautiful thing. And to this day, I love that about my wife, is that she, uh, she just, just herself. And what she has is what she has, and she does the best of what she has. Amen? And I love that. Not being somebody you're not. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come on. You don't have to be somebody you ain't. Naomi didn't say that. Go be somebody you ain't. She said go clean. Okay? Go clean because that's you. Put a little smell of on. That's okay. Okay? Put your clothes on. Some nice clothes you got. That's fine. They're yours. Go down yourself. This is something you got to do, doll. I can't do it for you, Naomi said. This is your life. You got to live your life. I'm going to help you now, but you've got to go do this. And then she says, don't make yourself known. Isn't that something? How, I, mean, I don't want to get off on this because I don't have time, but in today's culture, it's all about making yourself known. Have you ever thought that a fellow might like somebody who doesn't make themselves known? Who ain't trying to put it out for all the fellows? Excuse my language. You, you listening this morning or not? Okay. And then be aware of yourself. Be aware of yourself. Okay, she was just saying, you just know where you're at, know what you're doing, take care of you, you know, tend to yourself. Okay? Secret number two. So number one, you've got to believe you can have it. Number two, would you say this with me if you want a lasting love? Here it is. Be not somebody, but hang on, be the what? Y'all listening or not? Be you. But be the best. Well, that's just the way I am. Well, that's not what that's saying. It's be you, but it's be you making the best effort that you can be. Yes or no? Say. I don't know why I don't love me anymore. Well, I'm just being me. Well, no, you being the me that don't really care about you. Start caring about you and start caring about him and it, things might get better. Yes or no? Say. Okay? Come on. So. The way you keep yourself, the way you present yourself, what? Y'all listening or not? It does matter. But not pretentious, guys. Not pretentious. Ooh, look at me. I'm going to tell you something right now. It ain't real. It'll fade. It's phony. And it's going to fail. Be you. But be the best you you can be. But be glad God made you like you are. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Learn to appreciate you. Learn to tell you. It looking in that mirror and even say, hey, thank you, Lord, for making me me. I'm not a piece of trash. You made something special when you made me. And buddy, this is me. I never did that. But I started learning to do that because I had to. Amen? It was good for me Till my daughter would say, Dad, stop. You're killing us. Hush, Dad. Keep going. Verse 5. She said unto her, all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. So Ruth said, I'll what? I'll do it. I'm in. Chips. And she went down to the floor. Interesting. And did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. Now, we've got to keep moving. See what we can find. Secret number three. Have a teachable and willing what? If you want a lasting love, you've got to have some listening ears. Be open. Be open to what other people say, especially if it's coming from a heart, especially from the Scriptures or from somebody that really loves you that, you, that you believe in, that gives you good counsel, good advice. Be willing to listen. Amen? Because the voices in our past and the voices in our head can certainly keep us from our future. Amen? 
How many in your life before because of pain you thought you were absolutely no good? I'm just no good. Not worth nothing. Out of key, you want it. But then other people can try to help you. But you've got to be willing to listen. Amen. The opposite is a what? Stubborn. You don't understand. You don't know what I went through. You don't get it. Well, how long is that? That dog ain't going to hunt but so long. Do you want a future or not? And y'all are smiling at me because a lot of y'all have been in my life and you've loved me to health, you know, and encouragement. It's hilarious. It's hilarious me up here telling you this. This is absolutely destructive in relationships. Stubbornness, listen to me, stubbornness is destructive in your marriage. Y'all hearing me or not? Say, you can try to dress it up, put a dress on, look as pretty as you want, but if you're a stubborn woman, excuse me, I don't want to be with you. Excuse me. Same thing with a fella. You can be all that. You can be ripped, brother, whatever. But if you've got a stubborn, rebellious spirit, excuse me now, I don't want to be with you, right? Say, ladies, yes or no. Come on. Ugly. Here we go. Verse 7, when Boaz had what? Uh-oh. And drunk. That don't mean he's drunk. Okay. When he's eating and drunk and his heart was merry, Perhaps he had a little something. No, the point is this, is that who doesn't feel better after working all day and having a good meal and something to drink? You know what I'm saying? Big old glass of water, iced tea. Don't make more of that than what it is. Amen? Come on. He went to lie down because he's wore out doing this all day. Are you kidding me? That's hard work. And she came what? Came what? Heard the song this week, Killing Me Softly with His... Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Came in what? Softly. I won't want to watch myself in this video, okay? And she uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight. How many of y'all wake up in the middle of the night? You just do that sometimes in the middle of the night. It's midnight. This joker's wore out now. He's eat, he's asleep. I mean, he's just gone. He wakes up at midnight. And he's what? Whoa! Man! He turned himself. Somebody get in the bed with me. I hate to wake out of a dead sleep to something I'm not, you know, accustomed to. You know what I'm saying? So there's this. There's this person that didn't, he don't know who's at his feet. It could have been Fred. He don't know. Could have been a wild animal. He's outside. He doesn't know. So, behold, a woman's laying at his feet. Y'all all right? Secret number four. Be humble and what? Was Ruth humble and patient? You mean to listen to Naomi. Now, by the way, this was more of a custom, a kinsman redeemer law. We might get in time to talk about it, but this was, Naomi wasn't telling her something new. Naomi, Ruth had lost her husband. There was a relative of, of Ruth's husband. His name was Boaz. She had other relatives back home. That's one of the reasons to be back over there in uh, Bethlehem. Amen? And so this was a custom. It was, this is sort of the way it was going to shake down. But this was not necessarily the custom of Moab. So she's having to go along with Naomi, and she's having to do this. So be humble and what? Be humble and patient. What's something else we can learn? Pop it up. I want a great marriage, and I want it right now. It's arrogant, and it's unreasonable. You're not going to get a great marriage because you heard Pastor Gary today. You're not going to get a great marriage by just coming in and seeing me one time. It's going to take time. It's going to take humility on both parts. Yes or no? And it's going to take pa -pa 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 patience. The word is endurance. Not quitting. No. But enduring. Bearing up with a smile. Amen. So you can still have a great marriage. You've got to believe it. Marriage takes work and it takes what? It takes time. But don't say, yeah, but we should have it. We've been married 50 years. Yeah, but maybe you had not been spending the time like you need to. 
It's like starting over, man. Take that time. And we're going all over the place in this message. It could be you, you want to get married again. It, who knows how this might hit you today. Just talking. Here we go. And he said, who are you? See, he, he knew her. He had met her. And he, was, he sort of liked her. There was a little spark that last message. I felt a little spark on that last message when he met her before. She answered, I'm Ruth, your handmaid. Spread there for your skirt over your handmaid. I know you got that look on your face. <laughs> this ain't her saying spread, it ain't him saying spread your skirt on me. Did you get that say? No. No, she's saying bed spread. Are y'all cool? Yes or no? Yeah, she's saying take your, uh, spread your bed spread uh, over your handmaid, for you are a near kinsman. You are in my family. You are related to my former husband, my husband who died. And this was the way the tradition was. It's not a bad tradition. I've met many people over my years who, they, maybe a husband and a wife were friends with a husband and a wife. And the husband died over here, and the wife died over here, and that husband and wife that was yet alive ended up getting married. And they had some of the same friends. That's a similar situation. This is how it happened in the day. They were very communal. And it's not like today, well, okay, I'm single, I'll travel to California, I'll just move. That's not the way it was. If you were, if you were widowed, you were staying right there. So any hope of a future had to come from right where? Right there. And usually family. It's not intermarrying. No, it's not that. No, it's like... This guy, if he had a brother, if he had a cousin, or if he had, you know, it could be something like that. But she would still have the same family, stay in the same location. Does that make any sense with you? Some of the same support that she had before. It's a good plan. It's God's plan. And that's what he had for his people. Okay? So, spread your skirt doesn't mean there was a sexual encounter. There wasn't. This is culture. This is what they're doing. It was a cloak or a blanket. That was not about what was happening that night. Okay? She was presenting herself to him. Okay? It doesn't mean this is even going to happen. It has to be his choice if he's going to take her and marry her and care for her the rest of her life. She was lying diagonal at his feet. Okay? She made it clear why she was, why she was there. She made it clear. I'm not here for sex. I'm here for to be redeemed. Would you redeem me? Would you say that? Would you redeem me? Jesus is our Redeemer. He redeemed us. Amen? And that's all through this story. We're talking about the marriage aspect, though, this morning. Keep looking. Kinsman Redeemer Law. Individual would marry a childless widow. Preserve the dead husband's name. He had to be a blood what? Relative. Also, he must have the right and authority to redeem her. He must be able to pay the price, not just marry any whatever. You've got to be able to take care of her. He must be willing to what? To do this. It wasn't the law, you've got to do it because she lost her husband, now you've got to marry. It wasn't like that at all. It still was choice. Secret number five. Secret number five. Be a person of what? And what? You want to have a lasting love? Be a liar. Be a cheat. You won't have a lasting love. Be somebody that nobody can respect. Be somebody like that. You will not have a last. You might be something, and you might have something, but it's not a lasting love. Be a person of what? Integrity. Be a person of what? Virtue. Boaz was, and Ruth was. And they had a fighting chance at having something special. Amen? And you do too. You have a chance. But if you short-circuit it, if you short-circuit it, and so many people I counsel so often, they do, because they won't love, they sell themselves cheap. And they make decisions that aren't wise. And yet they're just, they're just longing for love. How about be a person of integrity? Yes or no? Be a person of honor. Do the right thing. Say that with me. Do the what? Do the right thing and watch God bless you. And he said, Blessed be thou, blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for you have showed me more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. 
in so much as thou follow not young men. You could have gone after anybody, ma'am, but you came to me. See his kindness there? Say. Whether poor or rich, darling, you could have had anybody. That's what he's saying. You chose me. I remember, I remember when my brother first met Kim. Kim, are you here today? She might be back in the back with the kids, but when I first met my brother, first met Kim, his words to me were, she could put her hand right on my arm and I'd take her anywhere in the whole world. That's what he said. That, that spoke volumes to me. Boy, that was his way of saying, boy, that's a special girl right there. Amen? Boaz saw in Ruth something very special. He blessed her. Keep going. He complimented her what? Go ahead. Okay. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that you're a virtuous woman. Did you see that? He eased her fears. He praised her what? How about, fellas, we start praising a woman's character instead of the body a little bit? How about that? Say, how about we start looking in that direction? You think that might help us? Yes or no? Say. Hey, oh, that's good, too. But, the, boy, character matters, doesn't it? How many are starting to realize that more and more and more as you get older? How much character and virtue and all that? Doesn't that stuff matter? Come on, baby. How about that? And now it's true that I am your near kinsman. Howbeit, there's a kinsman nearer than I. Wow. He was honest with her. There's somebody else that, because of the law and the way it lays out. He says, tarry this night and it shall be in the morning that if you will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee. As the Lord lives, lie down here until the morning. Okay? So he assured her that, he, that she would be taken care of. If the one that could do it couldn't do it, trust me, he wanted to do it. Amen? Okay? And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. She got up before anybody would know. And he said, let it be known... Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Shh. Boy, he liked this woman. Amen? So he didn't embarrass her either, right? Yes or no? Do you think it could have been embarrassing that a Moabitess woman was in the house of Boaz? you think that could have been an embarrassing situation? Yes or no? The way people hated the Moabites? Yes or no? Absolutely. You know how people talk trash, don't you? Let it not be said of us as believers of Christ at Fellowship Church if we talk that kind of trash. Are you hearing me say Come on. Also, he said, bring the veil that thou hast upon thee and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley and he laid it on her and she went into the city. So he what? He provided for her. He filled that veil up with some vittles. Amen? Here's secret number six. Speak good things about the one you love. Did you hear how Boaz talked to her? Did you hear all that? I mean, of course, I'm trying to draw it out for us a little more, but speak good things about the one you love. Well, my wife, she just, you know, such a pain in the rear end. Hey, if he says that about you, go ahead and be that, I guess. You hear it? Say, speak good things about the one you love. I even up on this stage this morning said some things about Kim. I sort of caution myself. I don't want it to be the Gary Kim show every week. But, you know, but, but listen to me, I'm not going to apologize for saying good things about the woman that I love. Amen. Just not going to apologize. You're going to have to deal with it. Amen. Fellas, that's what we need to do. Ladies, that's what you need to do. Have we learned something from this old story? I think we've learned. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? <laughs> I don't know why they say all this, but anyway... And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go not empty-handed to your mother-in-law. This is a smart man. Hey, here's another secret ain't on there today. You want to have a better marriage? Quit talking ugly about your mother-in-law. Get with the program. You know who gave me this shirt on my back today? Kim's mama. Kim's mama thinks she's the greatest cook on the whole planet. She's awesome. Why? Because I sell her that. 
And look what I got. Got me a shirt. Come on. Then she said, sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter is going to fall, for the man will not be in rest until he's finished this thing, this day. Okay? Here's secret number seven. Keep hope alive. And never give up hope in your marriage. You listening today? Yes or no? Or if you're looking uh, to still want to move on with your life and to have someone else in your life, you've got to never give up hope. Don't give up hope. Amen. Are we done, Ron? I'm wore out. Let's praise the Lord for his message this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.